Jimmy, this one's for you, buddy. Shame you couldn't be here tonight, but uh, yeah, this one's for you. I've been hiding for far too long. It seems like forever. Been singing now this song. I've been trying to hide too long. Seems like forever. Been singing now this song. Like forever. Been drinking all night long. Yeah, something like that. Welcome to the Hard Rock Show. I'm Andrew. I'm Dennis. I'm Dave. I'm Jimmy. Tonight is part one of two weeks in a row of what we captured at Melodic Rock Fest. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. We'll get into more details about that shortly. But for now, you have our details at the bottom of the screen. So follow us on our social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Listen to... THRS Radio. Thank Andrew. you. <laughs> <laughs> well done, man. Um, also, don't forget you can watch this show now worldwide on c31.org.au or via the app, which is available for free. We're going to do things like the live clips, hot topics, and all that sort of stuff. There'll be some regular format stuff in here as well, but it also is going to be a case of we did a whole lot of interviews at Melodic Rock Fest. I think we've got about 12 yeah, in the end few. done. <laughs> uh, not even all of them will make it to air, but what you don't see here will, of course, go to our YouTube account. Uh, but kicking it off... Tonight's live clip, still Panther touring soon. Mm. Friday, 17th of June at Big Top in Sydney. Saturday, 18th of June, Festival Hall, Melbourne. I'll see you there. Monday, 20th June at Eaton Hill Hotel in Brisbane. Eaton ain't cheating Hill, maybe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Wednesday, 22nd of June, Thibodeau Theatre Theatre in Adelaide. And Thursday, 23rd of June, Metro City in Perth. So live clip, live at Download Festival 2012. Still nice. Panther with community property. Tits. So we're here with the guys from Vanishing Point. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, I'm Jordan on drums. I'm Chris on guitar. How are you going? Really good. So you guys just recently got off show at the Elephant and Wheelbarrow for the Malike Rock Fest. How did you guys find the show? Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. There's uh, lots of people here, lots of people here. It's very packed out. Um, great energy on stage, nice and warm and sweaty. Like it, uh, We love it. Yep. Um, and yeah, people seem to love it. People seem to enjoy it. And that, that's the main thing, you know, as long as people have fun. Nice. So you guys got more shows coming up in the close future? Absolutely, we've got um, in June we've got the uh, Legends of Steel gig uh, and we're off, off to Perth as well, we're doing the Storm Rider uh, Festival uh, in Perth as well. Um, there's a tentative shows booked in for July in Melbourne and October in Melbourne and in September we're off to um, Prog Power in America, we're playing in Atlanta so yeah looking forward to that as well and of course we're, we're hanging for Legends of Steel here in Melbourne, it's going to be a great night, good crowd so Absolutely. looks really good. Nice, so are you working on your material, will we be seeing a new album anytime soon? Yeah, I think uh, pretty much, uh, actually Jordan and I discussed just the other night that we're pretty much going to get into the studio to start the drums in early August. Um, there's not going to be an album this year, but it'll be definitely next year. The, the pre-production is predominantly finished for uh, 10, 12 of the songs. There's around about another two, three songs, whatever, that we're going to be um, working on, etc., whatever. So it's going to be quite a, a wide variety of songs. And then once we've got them all done, we're just going to pick from the uh, which ones are the best, more or less, because, um, you know, with the album being released in Japan in the future as well, that's going to, they're going to want bonus tracks as well. So it's better to record a little bit more than having not enough, you know what I mean, more or less. So, yeah, it's coming along well. So um, how, how, what's the process of how you guys write a song? Do you individually write on your own or do you come together and jam ideas? Okay, well, uh, I sort of, I'll explain. I, I, Chris writes, um, you know, the majority of the song, the structure, um, you know, and he sort of assembles it in a, you know, a, 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 an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus and a, a whatever. Um, and he'll sort of program some drums in and then send it off to me. Um, and then I'll go in with uh, the superior drummer and sort of write on the computer what I would play in the studio so I can send, send it to Chris and the other guys and they can get an idea of you know, what I'm going to do, whether they like it or not. Um, and then after we're at that stage, that's when the solos start coming in and then yeah. Chris starts writing the lyrics for Silvio and then the, you know, the singing comes in and then it all comes together. Cool. 
Um, as an independent band, what are some of the struggles that you have to deal with with um, finding a balance between regular life and the career of a band? I suppose, look, it can be a struggle depending on... on Oi. Holy crap. Welcome to Melbourne. <laughs> um, it, it can be a struggle depending on how much you want to achieve and how much you want to invest in it. I mean, like, you know, we're all older guys, you know, I mean, we've got families, etc. We've got mortgages and bills and responsibilities just like everybody else. So, look, we do the best we can and we manage our time as best as we can uh, to a degree. It's not like we've got uber amounts of money or we're asking for people to donate pledges or whatever so we can, you know, go to the next step. Look, if it comes to the point where the next album that, you know, we're really struggling, we might, you know, ask for donations, but I think at the moment, like, we're trying our best to do it as independently as possible. Predominantly self self-funded you know yeah. as, as much as we can that, that's one thing that we've always tried to like concentrate more or less you know what I mean and you know anything else is a bonus there are I suppose struggles but I'll, no actually I won't say struggles because we really enjoy playing music and creating music so it's more um, from day to day challenges sometimes it's it's time you know because like I'm a fan I'm, I'm a father I've got twins, you know, that are eight and a half years of age turning nine, you know, they're in primary school and my wife and I just like work around them as well and they're, they're our main priority but the band is also something that we love doing. So there's always time to put towards it but it's not like we can go and tour in Europe for six weeks or be away for six months because it's then just everything else realistic. just crumbles behind you. So we're realistic in the sense that, you know, if we do, do some touring in the future, probably go overseas here and there. Like, we've done a Japanese tour in 2014, which was really successful. It was our first headlining tour there. We did five dates, starting in Hiroshima and finished in Tokyo. We sold out Tokyo. Um, and we're definitely going to go back there again. In Melbourne, at the same time, too, we enjoy playing Melbourne because it's home. Um, so it doesn't cost us so much out of our own pockets to you know to do shows here in Melbourne. Whereas whenever we go into state, and I said this on a Facebook post a while ago, and I was honest with it, I said, look, whenever we go into state and fly into state or drive there, it costs us more than what we're making. You know what I mean? It's it's more a thing that we love doing. You know what I mean? It's not like we're we're, we're in this to gather funds or anything like that because that's not going to happen. It's if people buy a little bit of merchandise. That helps. It helps ease the pressure a little bit. But first and foremost, we enjoy playing the music, you know, and that's what we're in it for in the, in the first place. Yeah. We're pretty humble. <laughs> um, so when you're writing a song and you've got some interesting themes behind your music, where does all that come from? Who um, writes all the lyrics? I don't know, man. I, I don't have a time to sit. I don't actually sit down and analyse it. I just do it. Um, when I'm at home and I'm creating a, coming up with a guitar riff, I don't know, I've got this ability, I suppose, to picture what the guitar riff's going to sound like and also what the strings and what the drums are going to do and what the bass is going to do and it's like a vocal melody as such. I've never been the type of guy who will sit down and just play guitar riff or practice his scales. I'm more into writing songs. If I'm going to sit down and practice, I'm writing a song straight away. And the songs, luckily for me, come out pretty easily. But there are some times when it's, you know, it's a bit of a challenge as well, but I'm happy to accept in challenges. Um, and with that being said, I'm really fortunate that, you know, I'm not saying this as me, but I'm very fortunate that I'm in a band, collective band with a whole lot of guys who are into what we're going to do together, you know what I mean? They understand where I'm coming from, but at the same token too, they are into it as well. So there's no stylistic clashes as such. I'm probably fortunate that I've got the equipment in my little home studio to write and create the music and then I just see them, send an email to the guys and go, hey, what do you think? Is it cool? Does it suck? Or what should we change? Etc. So there's still that diplomatic creative process, you know what I mean, where everybody gets a vote in it. But um, luckily and thankfully, it's not too hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. While Dennis does some homework, that's well overdue, <laughs> we've um, got a hot topic for tonight. And because there's four of us here, all four of us in some way, shape or form had something to do with Melodic Rock Fest, so we're all here tonight. Also because, as you can see there, we're filming also tonight our Thin Lizzy tribute, which will be at the end of the month. But you've got this one, Dave, the hot topic for tonight. It's about breeding rock stars or something. So yeah. Does society in, modern, in the modern world still breed rock stars? If you read through... All the biographies from the classic rock stars, they all had tragic upbringings, um, either a death in the family, lots to deal with, um, underprivileged, troubles in school, drugs, drugs, uh, abusive Alcohol. parents. But does that 
Well, it still happens, obviously. <laughs> not, not necessarily a good thing, but you got a lot more resources of people to deal with that. You have got um, counselors, you got ADHD treatment, you got schools with better equipped to handle students like this. Um, you got the internet for people to chat to. No, nobody's alone anymore. So, is that still breeding what mm. would become the classic form of the rock star that we know it? Is there anyone in a band still trashing hotel rooms? Is there anyone rocking up on a TV show saying fucking getting loaded on cocaine? Half <laughs> men. <laughs> Not the cocaine button. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. It's, and I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're spot on the money, actually, because, yeah. And, and also the internet, like, wherever these famous people go now, there's always some dickhead with a camera mm. following them around. So they can't get away with anything anyway, whereas back, you know, in the 80s, obviously they could. Like in the it's dirt. not acceptable to be a rebel anymore. No, it's not acceptable to be a rebel anymore, man. Political they correctness. put you in jail. The political correctness people have ruined it, you know. They fucked it up. Yeah. Well, when I saw Yngwie Malmsteen last year, I think, um, I think Bobby from Kiss the Viper was mm. saying he's the last real rock star. He has 21 Marshall amps on stage <laughs> he drives like seven ferraris he throws At guitars on guitars or? he does not give a fuck <laughs> he is he's a yeah i would agree that he's probably the last real rock star well lemmy too but he died sadly yeah. um and you, you got people like slash axel rose david lee roth eddie van halen dave mustaine james hetfield sebastian bark kiss ozzy osborne motley crew stephen tyler joe perry they all used to do a shit ton of drugs and booze and that's just what he wrote down when just we started now, yeah. this segment so. they used to do a shit ton of drugs and booze and they don't anymore and well let's face it their music's not as good as it used to be <laughs> yeah. Just saying, like if you want another rust in peace, Dave Mustang, you might need to start doing heroin again. <laughs> Come on, Ozzy, you're heading in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, there's a thing that goes around on the internet which is, I think, relevant to this topic, and that is that we've got this whole thing now where when the kids were 18 back in 1940 or whatever, they went and shot people in Germany. Now they have safe spaces because words hurt. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Harden the fuck up, <laughs> for starters. Uh, now, having had something of an interesting background myself, I don't think that should be anyone's excuse for not achieving or going mm. for anything. And I think, yeah, it sucks at the moment, but I think that the political correctness brigade will in its own form breed a new kind of rebellion we'll find something i guess i think in the future will be more like what the punk movement used to be and it's so anti-establishment so anti-pc i mean we're poster children for fucking political correctness anyway <laughs> but um <laughs> but i think that eventually the human spirit will always find a way to break the shackles that are being imposed upon it. So whilst it might happen in the next five years, I think there will be a generation coming through at some point that will go, no, fuck this. I've had enough of being told that I can't say this. I can't think that. Everyone's fucking entitled at the moment anyway with Facebook. So I think it's going to be an yeah. extension of that, that it'll go because now you've got Facebook is one means, but now everyone and his dog, literally, including us, is jumping on YouTube. Yeah. Um, there'll be a platform and it'll be a case of what resonates most with people and eventually people resonate with things that are constricting them. Yeah, well, and I agree with what Jimmy said. Mm. YouTube, internet, like, um, mm. you've got all these YouTube performers mm. and, yeah, they're endorsed by fucking musical product, brands, whatever, and they get a million hits and everything. But they're doing it from the safety of their own bedrooms yeah. and they have no mm. fucking personalities. And you need personality to be a fucking rock star breed, as yeah. we would say. So... Yeah. Yeah, people need, need to be need more like Ingve. Eat fucking donuts and get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll like trash donuts. a fucking hotel room. You book me one. I'll, fucking... <laughs> I'll film it. Yeah, exactly. YouTube content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, over to you. Give us your thoughts on the page. We'll move along. Or not. Yeah, well, Flip be a rebel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today at Melodic Rock Fest with the guys from Tear Gas. How you are you? Are. Very well. How are yeah, you? Good, thank you. That's good. This is the first time in how long that you've played together? Uh, this like, like these guys, eleven yep. years. Wow. Two thousand and five was the last time we were this lineup of Tear Gas. We did another EP as Tear Gas, but it was a completely different style. Yep. Uh, we're celebrating the classic period of Tear Gas at this festival, which is more of a melodic rock style. So, yeah. 
So what was the uh, main inspiration? I know that Andrew McNeese sort of put it all together, but how did you guys get to put this all together again? I was stayed friends all these years, so yep. um, it's pretty easy to, I guess, get everyone on board. Uh, Andrew really wanted us to do it, and so it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to actually do it. And these songs are fun, man. Yeah. We really enjoy it. So, and we yeah. were promised beer. So. We were promised beer. <laughs> That's always a winner. And, uh, yeah, and the spoils of war is what we were promised. <laughs> the spoils. So, the <laughs> so how, so. how much fun was it up there to do it before? Oh, man, we had a blast. We had an yeah. awesome time. Absolutely the best. I want to go back on. Yeah. Can we do another set? Is there time? It's not to me. Talk oh. to Andrew McNeese. Oh, we'll Andrew talk Brown. to somebody. Yeah. This is awesome, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> we loved it. No, it was, it was absolutely awesome and, and a really, really, really great. Like, people are here because they love that kind of music. You know, that's the only reason they're here. And there's a, a really, like, a, a cultural movement of people who love that kind of music purely because they like melodic rock and that's and that's what andrew's been doing for years uh we did a uh, jess got soto to a um like what was that 10 years ago 11 years ago uh yeah and it's purely because people love music and there's such a positive attitude such a great like friendly environment and uh it was a blast fantastic so after the success or the fun you've had tonight do you think you might do this again or I think we'll play another show, yeah. yeah. So at the moment, the plan is to play a headlining show in a couple of months. Cool. Uh, maybe one or two. And then beyond that, who knows? We did have a really good time. Yeah. Uh, it's just difficult when you get older and have other priorities. Uh, I can't really see us being out there every week gigging or anything like that. But I think it's the kind of band that we could sort of have on ice and then pick it up when, we, you know, when the right opportunity presents itself, which is great. So would new music be a part of that, do you think? Uh, it depends if everyone's on board. I, <laughs> sp speaking for myself, I'd love to, yeah. for sure. Absolutely, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but you probably got the three wrong guys for that because there's two more who are over here. Yeah, they're over there. All right, right, let's the ask shot. Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Ask him. <laughs> do you think there'll be any new music out of this? If you, I, sorry? if you guys keep going, do you think you'll do new music again? Uh, tough question. I don't know. Al, are you going to write any new music? I've written. Yeah, I, I oh, you're, you're on camera, Matt. Hi, guys. How are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is the joys of doing things backstage in a very cramped space. <laughs> so it was fun seeing you guys up there. Hopefully you guys had as much fun with it. What is sort of... You're all in other projects and stuff as well. So what's generally the future for you guys over sort of the next six months in general, individually or together? Yes. More to you guys. If we can do it, if, if, we, if we believe we can do it. We've had a lot of fun tonight. As I said, we're going to just try and do something else in the future with gigs and whatever. If something more comes of that, we'll see. But it's all very much open in the future at the moment. We'll see what goes on there, man. Yeah. Cool. And, so, and so, some, someone's writing me right now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> That's I admit I'm enjoying it. So. <laughs> so, all right. If there's anything else you'd like to say to the audience that are here tonight or at home, then just go for it. I just want to say, Thanks, that, Andrew. Thank you to Andrew and MelodicRock.com, uh, PRN Management, who are helping out with the events as well. Uh, thanks to you guys, the Hard Rock Show. for um, And look, it's great, to, it's great to see that uh, people still come out for this kind of music. And we've been gone a long time, and you know, we played for an awesome crowd that we were very, very grateful that they came out to see us and they remember us. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us for this little brief interlude. Hope everything goes well for whatever you're doing in the future. You're welcome. Yeah. All, right. All right. Cool. Let's party. Okay. <laughs> This week's clip of the week is a band that I think we've had in here before, have we, Andrew? Moonshifter? Yes. Yes. A band called Moonshifter. Thanks for stealing my thunder. <laughs> um, <laughs> band Do you want to retake called... it while we're here? No. Or? No. no okay. Just keep rolling along, no. man. Keep rolling along. Yeah, Moonshifter. Uh, they're a very good band. I think the song that we're going to play has been out for a while, but they only released the clip very yeah. recently. Um, it is called Glad That You Came, and it's bloody good. This is Check one of the out. best songs, too, of this band. Sounds yeah. like a Steel Panther song. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs>We're here with Pete, who runs a lot of nights at Elephant Wilbur. How yes, are you? Hello. <laughs> Very good, Andrew. Yourself? Good, thank you. Now, he runs PR and management and yes. a host of other things, but what is it about these nights and the Elephant and Wilbur that you do in particular? Look, I think on these nights for the Melodic Rock Fest, is, it's important to have a voice for all these lovely people that want to come out and hear what we've got to offer and the international acts as well. But on the Fridays here... 
Um, we basically want to have good acts every week um, and have something for people to come and enjoy and uh, just rock it out, really. We just want every good band in here to have a good time. So how has tonight been for you to see, I guess, the international side of things with last night and tonight, I guess, as well? So It's blown me away. Yep. It really has blown me away. Mainly um, the international, they're just stand-up guys. They're, there's no airs or graces. They're just like you and I, like they have a tune of the fat and, and just really enjoy each other's time. And then they get on stage and absolutely blow your mind. Yeah. It's amazing, just amazing. So you were here last night then? Yes. So what was your highlight out of last night's lineup? Well, I think um, the meet and greet during the evening, uh, yep. the start of the day with Eric Gromwell and, and Jonah, was amazing. It's an acoustic with like 50 small VIP people here to enjoy it. Um, and then obviously uh, Vanishing Point was amazing. Yep. And the one that really stood out for me as well was Tonk, Tonk from Canberra. Yep. Canberra was uh, was just uh, incredible. Great riffs, um, the, the drummer was insane, and just a good vibing band. Yep. So what have you, I guess, because you do a lot of it behind the scenes, you, you work with some bands, you put on these nights at, at yes. the venue here. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing the scene in Melbourne right now? Lack of being able to tell people that we're actually doing something. I think it's, uh, you know, radio in itself doesn't really give us a lot of time or any time really for local acts that are up and coming. Um, and then basically just the, the general way of being able to get it to the, to the masses to understand that we have got good music at a lot of venues, not just at the Elephant. And, uh, you know, Facebook's great, it does its thing, but I think really we need to find some other genre to be able to get it out there and let people know to get off their couches, come out and, and support live, local music. So if you could say anything to the punter at home, what would get you say? Get off the couch. <laughs> come in and see some good live bands, please. You do it, you owe it to yourself. And you owe it to all these local acts that uh, put their heart and soul into their music and they sit there, they write stuff and then you know, to not go out and watch them is just a bad thing. You know, I, I don't want to you know, do with a cussing or anything but we've got to support live music, we really do. You know, I do and I know Andrew does, yeah. all the boys at Hard Rock Show do and there's a lot of venues out in Melbourne that do it but we've just got to get those heads in the door and, and realise that yeah, what's on radio isn't the, the be all and end all of what's out there. It's in the live venues that really matter. You do a lot of great work with healthy well, shoes you, to boot, so you deserve a lot of credit. Thank you for taking the time to do this tonight. Oh, and thank you very much for letting me say what I can. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, mate. Thank you. One of our newest segments is to do a live review, and because most of us, except for Jimmy, were at Melodic Rock Fest, now this is not Jimmy's fault he wasn't there, but he did a lot of work behind the scenes in getting us all to be there to do some work on the night, which is where this content for the night comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the Friday night, because it was a two-day event, uh, Dennis and Dave went and did some work for us, so they're gonna give their thoughts on the event now. Um, night opened up with the Radio Sun, with um, Steve Javinsky from Black Majesty. Was this the all acoustic night? Yeah. Genesis well, half acoustic. The first three acoustic, bands were, yeah. were all acoustic. And um, yeah, great performances, great interaction with the crowd. Um, Steve Javinsky and that. Janevsky. 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 Yeah. Okay, Steve Janevsky. <laughs> sorry, mate. Actually pulled triple duty because he was the backup band for um, Paul, Paul Lane. Lane. Yeah. Yep. And then, of course, Black Majesty was on after that. So he had about, what, two hours on stage? Yeah. Mm. He did pretty fucking good. <laughs> Actually, Paul, went way over time. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did the second night. He mm. raised some great questions too. What the fuck is fairy bread? Mm. <laughs> Careful. The PC brigade will get you <laughs> Oh, it, It's not fairy bread anymore. It's like sprinkled bread. <laughs> <laughs> Um, once the acoustic sets, sets were done, we had Tonk. Tonk which, were fucking They great. were fucking We're just going to do like a review together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is about the quietest um, you've been ever. <laughs> first time I've seen them live. First yeah, time same. Well, it was their first time playing Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's yeah. great. I hope you guys come back. Come back more often. Definitely. Because you blew the fucking roof off the elephant in Willboro. When the fucking guitarist ripped all the strings off his fucking that guitar. Was that was nuts. And we have photos. So we we'll actually held it up into yeah. the crowd yeah. and got everyone nice ripping right. off the photos. And we went up to take a photo of it when they were getting off stage and they're like, they recognise us. And they're like, oh, it's you guys. Fuck. 
Singer gave a me beer. a fucking beer. I'm like, I'm driving. He's like, give it to oh, the other man. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tonk were the fucking great. <laughs> Tonk were awesome. They were good. And then Vanishing Point. Yeah. It was my first time seeing them. I've I fucking loved this band for a long time. I finally get to see them. I was fucking amazing. Yeah, they actually so good. Did, didn't do like a full metal set kind of thing. Mm, they went more than melodic right. songs. Yeah. And um, they even covered Journey's Separate Ways. That was a great cover. Which was great. I was right at the fallback where Bushy, the guitarist, was. And I'm like, don't fuck the solo up. <laughs> <laughs> First note, he fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> but they were really good. Uh, like, they had a... Uh, Glitch backing track fucked up on them at one yeah, point, but they yeah. just continued on and it was fucking just made great. Made a joke out of it. Yeah, made a yeah, joke out of it. Yeah, keyboard player. Yeah, so, they good. were really good. Highlights were definitely Tonk and Vanishing Point. Yeah, and Night Close with Sisters Doll, which was great to see a young band headlining and mm. um, brought in a younger audience. It was, the whole audience was um, very diverse. In very, age, yeah, so yeah, that was very cool that. as well. Mm. And um, yeah, I say this all the time after seeing Sisters Doll, but they are better and better every time I see them. And ending the night with one of my favorite Kiss songs, Love Gun. Yeah, that was fucking amazing. Um, oh, they ended on a cover, did they? Yeah, no, okay. it was a, kind of an encore. They did Welcome, uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse and then an extra one. Yep. But um, yep, yeah, they did songs from their already released album and some new songs, mm. which uh, gonna be, next second album is going to be great. So Most overall, they're crowdfunding for right now. So they are. Get, get on it. On they they get, have the pyro and stuff going. And yeah, had the fire and the confetti and the parade yeah, <laughs> lights and the um, sparkly guitar. And oh. Paul Lane was fucking really great. He surprised me because I was yeah. like, oh, danger, danger, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bet he can't sing anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, bullshit. He had wow. Amazing voice. Also, amazing voice. Mm. Bourbon is good for your voice. <laughs> <laughs> and he was making so many jokes with the crowd. It was hilarious. Yeah. Great banter. But yeah, overall, great night, yeah. great venue, great lineup. Great venue. Credit to Andrew McNeese for putting it all together. Definitely. Well, if any of you were at Melodic Rock Fest, then please give us your thoughts on the page. If not, you missed out, and we'll yeah. move along. We're here with some very special international guests tonight. So first of all, for those who don't know, introduce yourselves and what band you're with. My name is Jonah T. I play in the band Heat. My name is Eric Rommel. I play in a band called White Widow. <laughs> no, I'm in Heat, actually, yeah. But it's a pleasure to be here in Australia for the first time. Yep. Yeah, we really enjoy it here. Yep. So like you said, this is your first time down here. So what have you found most enjoyable so far and what's sort of been the biggest surprise about being in Australia? Well, I... I've been telling people that you guys seem so happy here, you know? People are smiling and are, you know, just seems like you guys are very happy and, uh, like, you enjoy yourselves. And I actually, I, I was talking about this re research that I read about, that you guys are, like, the happiest people in the world or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. European so it's, was, yeah, well, I, I really enjoy it here. <laughs> It's great here. I mean, the beer is cold, the weather is good, so, yeah. <laughs> well, our winter's warmer than yours, so that's a start. Yeah, this is like Swedish summer, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's yeah. So what are, what have you, you were here last night, you did your acoustic set last night, your, your little private one, and you've got your full-on sort of thing going tonight. So what are you excited to do tonight, and how was the experience last night? Well, the thing is, this is pretty, this is pretty random in a way, because I was invited by Andrew, you know, the, the promoter of... Yep. Of, of the whole festival, and, and he he just asked me if I wanted to come here as a special guest and drink beer and just have fun. <laughs> yeah, he, he negotiated well, you know, so, and then he asked me all of a sudden, could, could you do a 20 minute acoustic show on the Friday? And I was like, yeah, well, since I'm here drinking beer, yeah, I might as well do that. And then Mitch Malloy canceled. Yep. And then I got another email saying, well, since you're here drinking beer, could you do, yeah, you're doing that 20 minute show on Friday. Could you do that 60 minute show on Saturday as well? And I was like, yeah, I might as well do that. So that, that's what is, and we're playing with the White Widow guys, you know, yeah. some of the guys from White Widow, and we just rehearsed the day before yesterday. Oh, wow. So that was our first rehearsal, and now we're gonna do this. That's like, <laughs> that's you're a challenge. <laughs> Ah, it's just it's just music. It's just yeah. you know it's fun. So we're we're doing a few heat songs, a few cover songs. You know it's it is what it is. You know. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> so how often would do you like to actually tour here if you had your way about it? I know it's an expensive exercise for you guys, but what would you? How often would you love to come to a place like Australia? Well, we've been talking a long time about going here, and we yeah. So we I mean we want want to go here as heat, you know, and just yeah, yeah do what we can do, you know. <laughs> Uh, this was like the first opportunity I ever got to, or oh, yeah, oh no, but yeah, the first concrete like opportunity to go here, and it, it's awesome to be here, and I always wanted to go here, like, it's the last continent to book off the list, you know, so now we've been everywhere. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool. 
So what do you think of the venue that you're playing in tonight and that you played in last night? How good is the venue? We love the venue. I mean, yeah. it's 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 beer, it's music, it's <laughs> it's rock and roll. It's yeah. I, I don't know what what more to ask for. You know? No, it's a great place. It's a proper rock club. It's can ask more of it. It's great. Yeah. Now, one of our co-hosts, you've met me and, and Dennis last night, I think you met Dennis, but one of our co-hosts couldn't be here tonight, and he's devastated because he's an absolutely massive fan of your work. Oh, all right. Okay, a, that's he a, cool. He had a, a death in the family, which means he couldn't be here tonight. Nice. So if you could just give us something a little bit fun just to shoot to him, then just look down the barrel and just... Sure, man. All right. This one's for you. What's his name? Jimmy. Jimmy, this one's for you, buddy. Shame he couldn't be here tonight, but uh, yeah. This one's for you. I've been hiding for that long. It seems like forever. Been singing down this song. I've been trying to hide too long. Seems like forever. Been singing now this song. Like forever. Been drinking all night long. Yeah, something like that. There you go, Jimmy. See you next time, buddy. Thank you very Thanks much for that. Man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. Hope you have a great night out there. Thanks, man. <laughs> Cheers for that. Appreciate it. Cheers. Well, it's about time to wrap up for this week. We'll be back again with the same thing next week. Just more clips that we've taken either on the night or just live clips of found of these bands to give a representation of what we saw over the weekend. And interviews that are random as all hell, so... There's bands that are on the night and people that were just rocked up and wanted to chat to us and other bands are on the circuit at the moment too. So there was a lot of content and we just couldn't fit it into one and we only get a certain amount of two-hour episodes a year. So <laughs> <laughs> figured this was over two weeks. Yeah. Uh, gives us a nice little breather as well. But it's time to wrap it up. Time to go home. Details at the bottom of the screen. We've covered off everything at the start of the show about what we're going to plug in that. So just go to the page and, and follow us from there. Time to go to the bin. The nice bin. and quick. What's everyone putting in the bin this week? I'm um, putting the um, all of the big time promoters in the bin this week. Ah, yes. And we're going to keep this. doing it every week. Um, no Australian local band supports. I'm sick of it. It's time to do something about it. And we're doing it. I we just are. don't know what it is yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll find a way. Find a way. There's always a way. Gender neutral classifications for toys. They're what even the fuck? They're even talking about plain packaging for toys. Boys can't be That's boys, girls thing can't now? be. Yeah, I'm wow. serious. Oh, I'm, yeah, well, I'm glad I'm busy. Things are getting turned <laughs> down. Because, I, honestly, I don't care if my daughter plays with boys' toys, I don't care if my son plays with girls' toys, who the fuck cares? But if you go in the shop, you want to know where shit is. Who cares? Mm. Fuck off. Mm. Oh, the shit weather we've been having lately, <laughs> fuck, horrible. And people that drive in it and then do like 50 k's like under the limit, like fuck, because it's a little bit wet. <laughs> Get in the fucking bit. <laughs> it's an oldie bit of goldie and I'm putting sickness in the fucking bin because mm. I was crook as all hell last week after Melodic Rock Fest. That really put me on my ass. And now the missus is sick and I'm getting that too. And it's like, fuck off. You're not down with the sickness? No, not this week. <laughs> but I thought you were a disturbed fan. <laughs> I like the song, not the reality. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, these stupid fucking viruses can fuck right off in the bin with you. Yeah, yes. made okay, too. that was well done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Tune in again same time next week. Until then, I'm Andrew. Oh, I'm Dennis. I'm Dave. I'm Jimmy. And as always... Drink up. Rock on. Yeah. <laughs> Better than stuff. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> stuff. Okay, would you like me to count you in? Can you count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel right without Wayne. <laughs> <laughs>
I haven't heard Judas fucking priest all night. <laughs> Shut the fuck up for once about that goddamn fucking band. <laughs> oh, fuck off. If I was saying a ram fucking star, you'd be like, yeah! <laughs> Not if you did it every fucking time, I wouldn't. <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> With a nine inch nail. <laughs> In the industrial part of town? Oh, wait, we're already there. Yeah, we're already there, mate, so you're a bit late to that party. We haven't even started yet. No, no, wait till <laughs> Three. We normally get bloopers before we even start filming, yep. so... Always. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, pen four. Because I'm... Remember my list of people who stopped doing drugs and then became shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to write that down. That's a long fucking list. It fucking <laughs> is. What next? I have no fucking clue what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy I don't either. What do you got? Live reviews or? Live reviews. So what we'll do for this one. <laughs> Shut up, you pussy. All right? <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is... Hmm. Uh, Surprise, cockfags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Shuck it down. Surprise, cockfags. Here's something new. <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Why? It wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to hear me say it again. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Surprise, cat fags! Here's something new. Yeah, that was bad. Not really, I like the no, first the one better. No, the fags bit. Cat fags! Drag the fags out. <laughs> fags. You wanted to drag the fags out. <laughs> like the fags. Drag the cock fags. With okay. some fairy bread? <laughs> Sprinkle bread, get it right. Sprinkle bread. What's next? Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. I love sparkles. Oh my god. S really? Sunshine. <laughs> Guess um, what's going at the end of the episode now? That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what? Oh, if that turns out, have you got the? F is it on the USB? Yeah, it's all. Me? Every video we filmed. Okay, on cool. All right. I'll check it all out, and if there's something cool in there. Except for the one titled "Den Den Goes Wild." Don't open that. Fuck. <laughs> 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 I should just loop that over and over again. Shouldn't stuff, I? Stuff. 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 <laughs> Double step remix of Dave doing stuff. Stuff. Got to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else hear that? <laughs> Got to give uh, it up. That's tough. Our dog. <laughs> Everyone bored yet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs>